Hello, my name is Rodney Hill, and today we're going to talk about the PowerFocus 6000 ecosystem and what's new in the 3.0 software. So if we look at the PowerFocus 6000 system that you know today, it works very well with our high-end tools. They're very programmable. A lot of advanced options and strategies can be used on the tool, and they also report a wealth of data. So we get information back like torque, angle, torque rate deviation, even a graphical representation of the, of the tightening that we call a trace. But you may not need that in all of your fastening applications. So in the 3.0 software in the PowerFocus 6000, we've also added support for our mechatronic wrench TA, which reports torque and angle. It's a mechanical click wrench that can be used to report that information with the PowerFocus 6000 controller. And we've also added support for the BCV and BCPRE tools, which are a reporting battery clutch tools. These tools report an okay or not okay signal when the tool clutches out during its tightening. So if we take a look at the tool family here at Atlas Copco, we actually have a lot more tools that I don't have here that work with the PowerFocus 6000. If you see here, we have approximately nine different tool types that work with the PowerFocus 6000 today. In the 3.0 software, we also add support for SB tools, the TBPS, the mechatronic wrench, and our BCV and BCV RE clutch battery tools. And if we look at this, if we look at this from a high level, we can see there's 12 different types of tool families that work with the PowerFocus 6000 now. Everything from a battery clutch tool all the way up to a fixtured QST tool and just about everything in between. So if we take a look at how these products are positioned, we have five different virtual station types now in the 3.0 software. We have the critical and process that are very similar to the virtual station types that we've had in the past and do a great job of supporting our high-end tools with the high level of functionality and configurability for those tools. But other tools we have, the BCP, the Mechatronic Wrench TA, some of them don't have that functionality, so they really don't need that investment for the high level tools with it that don't have that functionality. So to that, we've added three virtual station types, um, our batch, which works with our BCV and BCP battery tools, and the joint and station virtual station types that work with our mechatronic wrench, TA, our SB tools, the ES tools, and the TBPS tools. The big difference between these three new virtual station types, batch, joint, and station, is that these virtual station types only report okay and not okay. If you need torque and angle and trace information and more advanced data collection, you'll need to step up to the critical or the process virtual station types. Because this is part of the flexible offering, if you decide at one point that you want to change and you want to upgrade to one of those critical or process virtual station types, that is a change that we can make with the flexible offering. And we can also add on different specific features that you can buy after purchase. For example, a soft PLC for the controller or true angle maybe for one of the virtual stations. So you can configure that however you like. And if you decide later that you want to add on to your functionality or you want to add a tool onto your system, there's lots of options for that. So let's take a look at one scenario. If we look at the PowerFocus 6000 using the IAM PowerFocus, and we have four virtual station types, and my system here, I've configured it with two process virtual station types, a batch virtual station type, and a critical virtual station type. And you can see my initial investment varies based on what I need for those applications, right? So I have a higher investment for my SRB battery tool using Tensor Pulse than I do with my, my BCV tool that only reports okay and a not okay from a clutch battery tool. Later on, if I wanna add on features like true angle, I can add that onto my first virtual station there with the STR tool, and now I can see the operator's influence on the angle, and I can do some advanced angle compensation. If I decide later I wanna add a fifth tool to the system, in this case, I've chosen a joint virtual station type and added a mechatronic wrench TA, and now I can get the torque and angle from a mechanical click wrench. And then later on, I decide I want to add low reaction strategies for my SRB tool to run TurboType, perhaps. I can add that onto the tool later as needed. All of that brings this back to the PowerFocus 6000 ecosystem. And if we look at what the controller does in the system that's so important, there's a few things. One, you have a common software programming interface for the controller. So all of your software control is done in one place. Um, all the tools are programmable with the same software. It's also a single point of integration for plant floor systems to connect it to your network, your field bus network. It also works with all the Atlas Copco data collection applications and reporting applications. It works with the Atlas Copco SQS solution. It works with ToolsNet. It works with Tools Talk 2. It also supports open protocol for all of these different tool types that we've talked about here. 
So it really is powerful that we have one system that now works with so many different tool types. And it also works with our accessories. So if I wanted to add on a, a selector, I could do that and take my tool out and work with a socket selector to guide the operator through the process. I hope you enjoyed this overview of the PowerFocus 6000 ecosystem and what's new in the 3.0 software. If you have any questions, please contact your Atlas Copco representative. Thank you very much.